It is time for everybody's favorite algorithm in the universe. A drum roll, please. Okay, I guess I'm not getting a drum roll. The sweep line algorithm. Bro, you guys have been asking for this one forever, and I have still not made the video on it, so I'm finally gonna make the video on it. And dude, I tried making this video three times, and I failed miserably the other two times. Hopefully this third time's the charm. The reason why I had to redo it for this one is because this algorithm is actually really kind of hard to understand, and I didn't wanted to explain it properly, okay? So, hopefully we do it right this time. Hello everybody, I'm Kara, and today we are talking about the sweep line algorithm. And no, that doesn't mean getting like a broom from your mom and like sweeping lines on the floor that's not how it works it's not that easy okay to be fair manual labor is very hard i have not done a chore in my life okay but i have coded algorithms so this should be kind of fine should be fine so once again sweep line is not exactly an algorithm right it's basically a technique that you use to solve problems but the best way to learn these kind of techniques is just to go through a ton of examples so we'll start with simple, we'll get to the more complex stuff. Okay, so basically you use sweep line whenever you have points in the Cartesian coordinate plane, okay? Like whenever you have x, y coordinates, the first thing you should be thinking about is sweep line. So let me just go through a very, very simple example of how sweep line makes problems a lot easier. So let's say we have this group of dots and we want to split it up into four quadrants such that we split it up as equally as possible. So you can see we took eight, we split up exactly into two, 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 two. And by the way, just so the problem is not like impossible, we're gonna make sure the lines are always vertical and horizontal. So this was kind of easy to split up, right? We had everything equal, but what happens if we only had one in this? How do we define how good like a split up is if like they're not all equal? Basically what we want to do is we want to minimize the maximum amount in any one quadrant, right? Like if we minimize the quadrant with the most points in it, that means we had to split it among the other ones. So essentially by minimizing the maximum of all four quadrants, we are spreading it out as equally as possible. So for example, if we had like five over here, that's not a good split, right? Because our max number in any quad quadrant is five. But what we can do is we can split it like this, we can split it like that, and now we have three, 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 one which is a much better split than having five clustered into one place. Okay, so now we've got to start thinking about the algorithm we used to solve this. So you might be saying, why don't we try the brute force solution? Cause that is the smartest thing to do. Always try the brute force solution first. Now, honestly speaking, you should always try the brute force solution just to understand how to solve a problem, but we got to be smarter, okay? Brute force is disgusting. So brute force is literally just trying every single possible pair of lines. You try like this pair of lines. Okay, that gives us like five in this, that's kind of bad. We try this pair of lines, that's four in there, that's not good. Over here, one in there, four in there, this still sucks, god dang it. So you can see, right, this is gonna take forever because we had to like try every single possible horizontal line and we had to try every single possible vertical line. And basically it doesn't really matter if like a line is here or a line is here, right? Like it only matters which two points it's between. So that basically means we have to try n lines over here, if n is the number of points, like n horizontal lines and n vertical lines. So that's essentially an n squared algorithm. And then for each pair of lines, we gotta count how many is in each quadrant. So that's n cubed. Holy moly, that is the suckiest algorithm I have seen in my whole life. So how do we make this better? So essentially my way of approaching a problem is you do the brute force solution and then you look at what is being repeated. Are you redoing any work? So the first thing you might try to make this a little bit better is just like, oh, why not just like split it straight in the middle, split it straight in the middle, and then we'll be good. But what happens if the example is like this? Then if you do in the middle in the middle, you get 3, 3, which is not bad, I suppose, but you could do better if you just do that. So that's not going to work. Okay, your O of 1 solution is not going to work. God dang it. So there's no obvious rule for deciding where the line should go. So essentially, we do have to try every single pair of lines. But is there a way we don't have to like recalculate which points are in each quadrant? And the answer to that question, as you probably are expecting by now, is yes. So let's say we have like this split right here, right? These are the two lines we chose. We have like five in this quadrant and one in this quadrant. Then if we shift over the vertical line, right? Only one point changed quadrants, right? Literally only this point moved from this quadrant to this quadrant. So why the heck are we wasting time going through all of the other points and seeing which quadrant they are if they didn't even change? So clearly we are redoing work, so this is the place we gotta optimize. And then if we move it over another time, right? Only this one moves. So you gotta get the pattern, right? Basically, if we move the line from left to right, only one point is gonna change at a time. But if we do just jump randomly, like if we just randomly change our like cross to be over here, now we lost all the information we used to have, so we'd have to start over from scratch. So you can see by doing it in a certain order, we were able to save a ton of computation. So essentially what sweep line is, is you're literally sweeping a line from left to right. In technical terms, it's basically sorting the points by x coordinate and then moving through them from left to right. So exactly, right? We sorted these guys by x coordinate, 
we start at the leftmost guy and put it between the leftmost guy and the second and the leftmost guy. Then we move it over to this guy and this guy. Then we like move over to this guy and this guy, and we just go through it in order of x coordinates. And now we have an n squared algorithm because we don't have to recompute every single time. We essentially fix the horizontal line, right? We start at the leftmost vertical line. We count how many of these each quadrant, and then we just move it and we only had to check one thing that changed. So let us just code it up to make this clear. So I already wrote up the starter code. So basically we have our int n, which is the number of points. We have our pairs of x, y coordinates for each of our points. Then we have a four way maximum just cause we had to find the maximum of all four quadrants, right? I didn't want to like do this every single time I wanted to do that. So I just wrote my own function. And then this is just going to be our answer, right? Like we want to find the minimum of the maximum, right? So we had to keep track of our original minimum and then slowly get the smallest one each time. And then you just read in all your points. So now let's actually write the algorithm. So the first thing we got to do is we got to sort our points. All we got to do to do that is we sort points, comma, points plus n. And that'll automatically sort it by x coordinate because that's the first in our pair. Then we got to go through each of the points. And now we got to fix our horizontal line, right? So we're going to do for int i equals zero, i is less than n i plus plus let us look how long this for loop has to be right putting your line over here doesn't really make sense right because it's always just going to be better just to put it here there's no reason why it would not be better so essentially we could either be here 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 or here which is essentially n minus one line so we only had to do the for loop n minus one time okay then what the heck is the y coordinate of this line right basically we could say that anything above this point is above the line and anything below or equal to this point is below the line so we'll say int y is equal to points i dot second. And now we had to compute the leftmost vertical line, right? Because we had to first compute the leftmost vertical line and then we could keep changing one each time we move it to the right. So for int j is equal to zero, j is less than n. Also what we got to keep track of is we got to keep track of how many are in each quadrant, right? So we got to have an int upper left uh, equal zero, upper right equal zero, lower left equal zero, lower right equal zero. And now we just had to check which quadrant each of the points is in. So if our point j dot second, which is this y coordinate, is greater than the y coordinate of the line, meaning it's above the line, that means it's in one of the upper coordinates, up, upper quadrants, right? Then if our x coordinate, our first is greater than x, then it is in the upper right. So we do ur plus plus. Otherwise, we do ur ul plus plus. And then else we do same thing, ur plus plus. L, U, L plus plus. Okay. Essentially, we're assuming that the lines cannot be on a certain point. That's slightly more complicated, but it shouldn't be too hard to figure out on your own. All right, so now we've fixed our horizontal line. We found the leftmost lines values. Now we had to shift it over, changing one each time. And since there are n minus one lines to go through, and we already did the first one, we had to go through n minus two more. Four into j equals zero, j is less than n, j plus plus. Actually, we could just do j is equal to one, and it goes to n minus one. So our line starts here, right? So the first time we want to move our second point, which is j is equal to one from here to there. So if our j's point is above the line, then we want to move it from upper right to upper left. However, if it is below the line, then we want to move it from lower right to lower left. And also, if we find a better version, we want to print it out, okay? We don't want to just leave our <laughs> mi as 10 to the five. That is so lame, okay? So essentially, we got to do mi is equal to min of mi and the max of ul ur ll lr essentially it's taking the max of the four quadrants and taking the min over all possible lines and then we got to do that inside here too okay and then at the very end we just got to see out mi all right so why don't we just try this example right we have six points it should ideally tell us the answer is two right because it splits it up into two 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 all right so we have six points zero zero one one two two three three four four and well that might mess things up Okay, if I do 5, like 55, then it should be fine. Hold up, did I mess up somewhere? Oh, whoops, <laughs> whoops, it's gotta be L and L, L, okay, whoops. <laughs> okay, okay, if it's below the line, it is not in the upper quadrants, what am I doing? Okay, yeah, now we should try. 6, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. And you get 2, very cool stuff. What happens if we did our example where we have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? Then it should give like this and it should be two. So let's run it. Eight, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, two, zero, two, one, three, zero, three, one. And you get two very epic stuff. Our algorithm is working. All right, so now we're gonna get to the more advanced applications of it. If you guys wanna try out a problem, I'm not gonna do the entire problem implementation right here, right now. 
but Cal Steeplechase is a very good example of line sweep, okay? So I'm just going to go over the concept behind it right now. So essentially this is the problem, and what it says is find a line segment that Farmer John can remove from a bunch of random line segments such that the remaining line segments do not intersect. So essentially, if you have like a line segment here, a line segment there, and a line segment here, you would basically tell Farmer John one of these two line segments to delete and then there will no longer be an intersection. And obviously you can remove either of them, so you just take the one with the lower index. Essentially the idea behind this problem is that it's only possible for Farmer John to remove a line if there's only one intersection. And the problem guarantees that you're going to find a line segment. So essentially what it's saying is that you're either going to have one intersection or no intersections and all we got to do is find out what that one intersection is. So looking at the diagram is so obvious, right? You can literally just see that intersection staring at you right in the face. But a computer can't do that. They would have to go through literally every single pair of line segments and see if they intersect. So that's not going to work. But line sweep makes this so much hacking faster it's not even funny. So let us do a more complicated example so that it's a bit more clear. Okay, so as you know in line sweep we always start from the leftmost point. And essentially I'm just going to walk you through it because it is kind of hard to figure out on your own. But basically what we do is we activate the line segment. Basically all that means is we're saying, okay, we're going to keep track of this line segment. We know that we've already seen it. Okay, so this one's activated. So now let us go to the next one. This guy is the next one, right? So now we activate this guy. And what we do is we check it against other activated segments. So essentially, this one's also activated. So we check, do these two guys intersect? And obviously the answer is no. So we move on to the next one. So now we look at this guy and we activate him and we're like, okay, let's see if he intersects with any of the other activated guys. Now you can probably see, right? Like if I had to check against all the other activated guys, this would take way too long. So what happens if all of them are activated at the same time? Then that's an n squared algorithm because for every single line segment we had, we had to check it against all the other ones. So basically the cool idea here is that if this line segment does not intersect with this guy, then there's no way that this guy is going to intersect with this guy. Because first off, we already know that these two guys are not intersecting, right? So there's not going to be like a crossover and somehow this guy like intersects with this guy. It's not going to happen because then there would be an intersection here and that's bad. So essentially we know that if one of the two intersects with it, it has to be this guy. So we check these two and no, they're not intersecting. So we are good. Then we go to this guy, activate him and we check. Does he intersect either this guy or this guy? So we know that this guy isn't going to magically cross over because we know that these two guys don't intersect. So we check against this guy, not intersecting. We check against this guy, not intersecting. And then we move on to the next one, and then it's this guy. We check against this guy, we check against this guy, not intersecting. All right, so now we're getting to some of the endpoints, right? Some of our line segments are ending. So whenever we get to an endpoint, well, basically what we do is we deactivate it. So now this guy is going to go back to being black, and we check above and below again. So this guy is the only one adjacent to it. So these guys still don't intersect, we are still good. Our next endpoint is going to be this guy. Check him against the guy above him, that's directly above him, that's activated, and we say no, they're not intersecting. The reason why we only have to check the activated ones, because if it's not activated, they're never at the same x coordinate. So essentially, we only have to check these activated ones. So this guy's fine, we go to this one, the only activated guy who's adjacent is this guy, so this guy does not intersect, deactivated. But now, what we got to do is we got to activate this guy. And you can see, we don't immediately detect the intersection, right? Because this guy is the adjacent one, and they don't intersect. And then we go over to this endpoint, and we're like, okay, it's over. Let's deactivate it, check against this guy, check against this guy, and still no intersection. However, we finally detect the intersection when we disable this guy. So we go over here, we disable it, we check it against the activated dude, and they intersect. So finally, we have found our intersection, we have solved the problem. All right, just to explain how the activation and deactivation work, a segment is only active if you're within its x coordinate, right? So from here to here, uh, this segment over here is going to be activated. From this here to here, this one's going to be activated, and so on. And quite clearly, two segments can only intersect if they're active at the same point, right? Like, they both have to be active at the intersection point, which is why you only have to check the activated one. And you can see, right, just by moving from left to right, we are able to keep track of which ones are activated just by using a set. And that takes log n time for insertions and deletions. So if we want to mark something as activated, we just add it to the set. We want to mark something as deleted, we delete from the set. And we know that each one can only get activated and deactivated once because we're going from left to right. It's pretty big brain. Unfortunately, I don't have time to code it for you guys because the implementation for this problem is super hecking long. But the hard part about implementing this is not actually a sweep line algorithm. The hard part is like finding two lines intersect, like finding which lines are adjacent to it, that kind of stuff. Honestly, there's like a ton of tutorials for that online, but essentially I just wanted to talk about the sweep line algorithm itself. Also, let's just talk about one more cool application of this. Essentially, why don't we have like a ton of rectangles, 
right? And you wanted to find the union of their area. Well, you might be a math guy and you're like, hey, I know this. You just add up all the sums of the rectangle, then you subtract out the common area. We're good. Principle of inclusion, exclusion. I, I'm, I'm so good at this game. But first off, you could have n squared of those intersections. So that's like already bad, okay? And then second off, you could have like triple intersections, right? Why don't the three of them intersect? Then you gotta add back in. Why don't you have four of them? Then you gotta subtract. Then you have five-way intersections. Then you gotta add again. This sucks. So essentially, principle of inclusion and exclusion will not work here. So how do we make it so that there is no overlap between these rectangles? For that, we use line sweep again. So why don't we just draw a bunch of vertical lines, right? Wherever there's some important points, right? And holy moly, we already divided this up into rectangles that are disjoint, right? See, we got this rectangle right here. We got this rectangle right here. This rectangle right here. This rectangle right here. And this rectangle right here. And there's only at most two end of these rectangles. So this is a pretty sweet deal, not gonna lie. So essentially, all you gotta do to solve this problem is you sweep from left to right and add up each area. So the height times the width distance between the two lines, you get this area. Same thing for this area, same thing for this area, so on and so forth. And just by going from left to right, you could do this in n squared time. It's pretty good. Now honestly, you could do even better, okay? So if you're an advanced coder, I'm just gonna explain how to do this like even better than n squared. So the tricky situations happen when you have like a rectangle here, a rectangle there, and a rectangle there. Because your height originally starts like here and here, right? So it's this height plus this height times this width. However, when you add in this rectangle over here, right? it increases the height to this entire thing. It's not two separate heights. It joins them together, and now you have this entire thing as your height. So in the n squared version of this algorithm, you would literally have to recalculate the height every time you reach a new line, and that would take a long time. But if you just use segment trees, right, you check this uh, segment, 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 all these segments, and just as you go through each rectangle, you activate each segment. So originally these two segments are activated, then when this guy comes in, this segment gets activated too, and then when these two stop, we basically only deactivate this segment, and we act deactivate this segment. And it only takes n log n time. And it's only possible if you order your points go from left to right. The whole premise behind sweep lines is just ordering your points and going from left to right. Alright, if you didn't understand any of the more advanced implementations, don't worry about it. Like the main thing you have to understand about sweep lines is how it works. Like whenever you approach a geometry problem, just always sort your points and see what happens if you go from left to right. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. It took me a while to make this video. Sorry about that. But thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.